All right, so last time we left off at um, where, where did we left off? Okay, what happens for domestic consumers? Now, let's check out what the government gains. So the government imposes a tax, and what do they get out of it? It's called the government tax revenue. It is um, it is the amount that the tariff charges times the value of the imports which um the country is currently importing so in order to calculate what the, the government tariff revenue is we can also calculate what the total surplus of the nation is and is a nation national loss or a national gain from imposing the tariff so we get this little simple equation total cost total surplus I mean equals consumer surplus plus producer surplus plus government tax revenue we'll see how this works out in a minute okay now let's um, look at this scenario what area represents the government's tax revenue so which area is this as we know when this is the world price line the tariff increases the price of the import so it's a domestic price with tariff so originally we said the consumer lost A, B, C, and D. Well, where did the government gain from this? Because they obviously gained, they imposed a tax. So the government gained this rectangle right here, C. Why? Because B and D become that way loss as a result of the tariff. The tariff puts the prices up, the producers overproduce, but it also raises the price which the consumers underconsume or under want to buy or they don't buy at all. So it causes a uh, dead weight loss here and here leaving the middle free for the government to claim, which is the imports. And it shrinks the imports as we see. How much um, tariff revenue does the government collect? Well, we can do that. It will, it will be a simple equation being 330 minus 30, 300, which will equal 30, times the difference between S1, which is 0 0.8, and 1.4, which is 0 0.6. So the government will um, collect $1.8 million as a result of the tariff. Pretty good deal, huh? Now, what is the producer effect from overproducing? B rectangle B and what is the consumer's effect of under consuming D now here we see how we're gonna derive the demand curve for the the quantity imported of bikes this is a bicycle this is the example the book uses or the PowerPoint so what do consumers lose they lose they had previously a E, B, C, D, and F. What did they lose? A, B, C, and D. What did the producers gain? They originally had G. Now they gain A. So their surplus increases. What does the government gain? C. And what is the net, net national loss or debt weight loss from the tariff? That would be D and E. B and D I'm sorry um so what does this little diagram over here represents well this represents the demand for imports so at a price let's say this equilibrium price no trade is needed let's say this is 375 at a price of 375 imports required are zero so the producers produce as much as the consumers want to consume this is the equilibrium but at a world price of 300 Consumers demand 1 million bikes of imports But as the, as the government increases the tariff or imposes a tariff of $30 you can see how Consumers actually demand less of the quantity to only 600,000 So they actually their desire for imports of bike was reduced by 400,000 Then this little triangle here Input is the dead weight loss B and E and C is the what gains from the 
The government's net, um, net natural net tariff gain from importing the tariff. Terms of trade and effect and autonomous tariff. Large country gains. Now, a large country is a country whose share of the world's imports of some good is so large that its buying of that good can affect the world price unilaterally. So, it can actually change the terms of trade by deciding how much it wants to import or export. This type of um, buying power is called a monopsony, the complete opposite of a, mon a monopoly. Um, there's a brief example here. You guys can just look over it's self explanatory. Now, when a tariff lowers the price of an imported good, it has a terms of trade effect, which is the price of the country's international exports divided by the international price of a country's import. We'll look at that later. So, tariffs and the terms of trade analysis. Now, with free trade, the world price is 300, right here. Now, the foreign supply curve, SX, which is this, right here. Notice it's not anymore perfectly elastic or horizontal. Now, since the country can impose what they want to produce, it's, li it's, it's um, linear, we're gonna say upward sloping, not not totally perfectly elastic some inelasticity is in there this is what it says right here now the proposal our government imposes a tariff of six dollars so the tariff imposes six dollars you see that creates a price wedge if you remember from micro if you're taking micro or have taken micro a price wedge or a tax wedge is equal to the amount when you move from the equilibrium point leftward where the top of the demand curve and the bottom of the supply curve actually meet, not meet, but the distance equals the, 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 the total amount of the tax. So the new price rises to 303 for consumers and it is 297 for producers. So they're both worse off. Producers want to sell at 300, consumers want to buy at 300, but unfortunately, that can be because of the tariff. Although the government um, collects six dollars on every unit imported, tariffs usually hurt consumers, not the producers. Tariff makes com um, competition in the um, in the domestic country greater and increases the price, which is great for the producer, but it's horrible for the consumers. We end up paying more. In this example, the price wedge is equal to each other. So, three dollars for per consumer, three dollars per producer. Everybody gets a fair share of the taxes. Now, there's a little analysis here you can guys do. You just calculate the consumer surplus, producer surplus. Add both of those letters up, you get total surplus. Now, with the tariff, you can add the consumer surplus, which shrank. Now you lose A, B, G, C, A, B, C, and D. The producer surplus, which now gains is H, K, and A. And the uh, um, government tax revenue is C and, B and G. And total surplus. And you can actually see that you're missing B and D when you put the total surplus, which you have here. So the total surplus is actually less with the tariff than in free trade. That's why most economists and I agree that you should let um, countries trade freely without any government imposition of it but that's just not going to happen in this real world so who are the winners who are the losers okay, you guessed it consumers are the losers producers are the winners um is, is the nation's well being greater or smaller after the tariff it's actually smaller because if you put this in um you can calculate this in number terms it's way smaller and who is paying the tariff well here Consumers are paying three dollars of the six dollars and producers are also paying three dollars to six dollars So they're both Actually paying the tariff on um, Equally, but it also depends on the price on the elasticity of supply the more el inelastic it is the more the more the price the tariff Will be paid by the supplier or producer the less inelastic it is Supply curve is the more the consumer will have to pay so now we're gonna next slide next video we're gonna talk about the national optimal tariff.